Master Beekeeper Jason Miller here with you today, and what I want to talk about is Hummer Bee versus Bobcat. Advantages, disadvantages of each platform. As you can see, we have both of them here at Miller Honey Farms, and each one has its unique um, advantages and disadvantages. So uh, I wanted to kind of go over those and maybe help you decide if you're in the market for one or the other, what would work better in your beekeeping operation. So I'll start off over here with the Hummer Bee. This is the XRT model. This is their top of the line uh, unit. This is a 2017. So we've had it a, a little over a year. And uh, you know, it's, it's got a number of things that are nice. We traditionally have been a Bobcat um, operation. Uh, we've been running Bobcat since the 1970s. And so we're just starting to play with the Hummer Bees as, as those are becoming more of the industry standard in beekeeping. Uh, we thought we'd, we'd give them a shot, and we actually have two of these uh, machines here at Miller Honey Farms. But the majority of what we have are bobcats, and uh, we probably have six or seven, uh, actually eight bobcats right now, ranging from 753s all the way up through S450s, uh, the most modern of bobcat machines. And then on the Hummerbee side, we have a 2016 XRT and we have a 2017 XRT. So first off, uh, I wanted to kind of go over the advantages of, of each of these models. So in the Hummer Bee Camp, um, what's really nice about it is it's ready to go straight from the factory. You know, you buy it, it's designed for beekeeping. So everything that you could want, uh, you can option and order it just as you need. And so you're ready to go on day one, no modification needed. Uh, the visibility is phenomenal. And getting in and out of the Hummer Bee, as you can see, is, is really easy. You know, and I can see behind me, I can see to my sides, um, you're way up high, and the visibility is, is really unbeatable in the uh, Hummer Bee. And it's so quick to get up and down and in and out, you know, to grab something, check on something. Uh, you're, you're not struggling to get in and out like you are on the Bobcat. Uh, it also has the two speed option, which is phenomenal when you're in almond orchards. Um, running around the shop, you know, you've got long distances oftentimes, or uh, in pollination, you've got distances between the different drops, and rather than having to load the forklift up on a trailer, then drive to your next uh, drop of bees in, in an orchard or in a field, you can simply kick the Humber bee into high speed and drive along at uh, 12, 13 miles an hour. Versus the Bobcat, they do make some two speed options, but in the S450 with the the hand controls, they do not have that option. And um, so you're limited to more like six miles an hour in the, uh, in the Bobcat. And not only that, because of the more narrow wheelbase of the Bobcat, I imagine they're pretty rough uh, if you were to get the two speed um, on the rough terrain like we find in orchards and fields and, and whatnot, um, versus a longer wheelbase on the Hummer Bee. Now, continuing on with the Hummer Bee, some of the disadvantages that we found over the last couple of years, and, and there are quite a few, and some of them are pretty significant. Uh, the number one would be the reliability. Uh, we've had these machines, like I say, only for a couple of years, and we have had oceans of problems with them. Um, from the electrical, a lot of the electrical is just, it, it's homemade, right? So you're talking about crimp connectors, you're talking about stick-on, um, you know, wire supports stuff that just is not commercial grade and is not gonna stand up over time. So water gets in, uh, connections get pulled apart, connections wear, because uh, they rub. The reliability is just not great. Speaking about this particular machine, um, in the past year we've had the fuel sender has, has quit working, um, the cooling fans for the intercooler, one of those has gone out on it, um, the side shift on our other unit, will randomly shift all the way to one side. Um, if it gets exposed to any moisture, there's a problem with the solenoid up here on the, on the side shift. Um, boy, there's just been a lot of problems. The throttle uh, sometimes won't, won't work. It'll need to be restarted in order to get the throttle input correct. And I believe that's a software issue that, that they're working on and aware of. Um, we've had the two speed quit working where it's stuck in the two speed, it's stuck in high. Um, because a wire rubbed on the articulation. So we're talking, you know, a half a dozen problems on these in the past couple of years. On the Bobcat side, they're just super reliable. 
Um, after about 20 years, you know, we start to have some issues. Sometimes our biggest one again is water. You know, these are, we cut open the, the calves and they're driven behind trucks that are constantly spraying mud and dirt and water into them. And so they suffer a pretty harsh environment. Um, and that takes its toll over time. So those connectors into the computer, and it's gotten better with the newer machines. You know, they've, they've begun protecting those parts a lot better. Um, but we're not talking about something in year one or year two that's gonna be a problem. We're talking 15 years down the road uh, that becomes an issue. Uh, so, you know, reliability, huge difference that we've seen between the two. Um, on, uh, continuing on with some of the downsides to the Hummer B, parts availability, you know, filters, um, finding a mechanic to work on them. These are a dime a dozen. You can go to Napa, you can get all your filters. They all cross-reference really easy um, versus the Kohler engine in here is, is newer. It's not common. Uh, it's a lot of captive parts that are hard to find. And this thing's homemade. So many of these parts are homemade by a and forklift and you can't just run into your local auto parts and, uh, and get those, those parts. Um, and like I say, finding mechanics, you know, there are a million mechanics are familiar. There's a Bobcat dealership uh, in every city and a and you know, there's one uh, where, they, where they manufacture them. Now that doesn't mean you can't find a mechanic who can work on them, um, but finding, you know, parts and people who are familiar with the units is it, it, not there. Um, the trailer for us is, is a big disadvantage to the, to the Hummer B. With our Bobcats, we don't have any ramps or any tilt on our trailer. So we drive up onto a trailer that has no ramps. We just build these little stubby ramps and I can show you an example of one of our trailers. Uh, we actually build our trailers in-house. But we don't deal with any tilt deck issues, hydraulics, um, any ramps that you need to flop down. We just drive straight up onto the trailer because this can, can climb right up onto a trailer without any ramps. The Hummer B cannot climb, so it requires a tilt deck trailer with the you know, issues that come along with that as far as hydraulics, um, locking the trailer down, and, and greater complexity, especially when you want to have a dual axle. Um, they offer a single axle trailer, but that's got a lot of disadvantages for us. You know, a blowout can be catastrophic in a single axle. We drive on a lot of uh, gravel roads, and at speed, you know, the single axles tend to want to really uh, wag and a dual axle trailer is so much more stable and they're just easier to, those are harder to build in a tilt deck than, than they are um, in, a, in a single axle and that's I believe one of the reasons that Hummer B only offers, a and only offers a tilt deck trailer um, for theirs. And you know then just the history of the company, right? Bobcat's been around forever. 40, I don't know how, how long, but um, I know we've been buying them since the late 1960s. Um, a and is a much more recent company. So uh, are they going to be around in 30 years? You know, can you get parts in, in 20 years? That's, that's kind of unknown. Now, um, speaking of the Bobcat, we've kind of gone over a lot of the things that differentiate them and, and pros and cons. Like I talked about, the reliability is just rock solid on these. Um, they're built to a much more professional level. Uh, the electrical connectors are all automotive, waterproof grade. Everything's in wire looms. Um, parts aren't exposed. Uh, you know, I talk about the fans going out on this. The fans are just out in the open waiting for, you know, a tree branch to fall in there, jam up the fan and, and burn it up. Um, you're not going to see that kind of thing on a Bobcat. They're designed uh, to a much more robust level of, of design and just a lot harder to hurt uh, in, in every aspect from electrical to mechanical um, everything sealed everything um, built to that professional grade I guess I'd say you know where you have a manufacturer that's cranking out thousands of them a year versus you know um, I don't know maybe a hundred a year so um, I talked about the trailer. You know, you've got some more options as far as you can put tracks on a, on a Bobcat um, for really, really muddy. Uh, parts interchangeability uh, is, is quite high, and there's just a lot of parts and accessories available for Bobcats. Ton, you know, um, there's a whole accessories market around, around Bobcats. So easy to find those types of things. Um, yeah, we talked about the mechanics and finding mechanics. Now, on the con side of the Bobcats, 
getting in and out, the ingress and the egress of the Bobcat is significantly worse. Uh, you can see I kind of grab up here, I step here, I pull myself up, I step here, then I step here, and then I sort of contort my body around, I step in, sit down, all right, I'm ready to go. Um, and, and once I bring this mast back in operational uh, you know, mode, I can't really get out. That's why we cut out the sides of these machines so that if, if we have some sort of a, a mechanical issue, we could hop out the side of the Bobcat. You can also hang your head out you know, and see because your visibility really stinks once you're in a Bobcat. Uh, behind me, I can't see much of anything. And imagine you throw a beekeeping uh, you know, veil over the top, which, which further kind of limits your side-to-side -side visibility. And, and it's really tough to, to see what you're doing. Um, particularly behind you, which can be a safety hazard with employees, you know, walking around, smoking the bees, um, in tight quarters inside shops. Uh, you really can't see if you're going to hit something very well. So uh, the overall visibility, once you're in here, is quite poor, and getting in and out is, is not a uh, simple process. Um, you know, if you're fit, it's not, not too big of a deal, but uh, for heavier folks, older folks, um, it's, it can be a bit of a chore getting in and out of, of the Bobcat versus you saw how easy that was and you saw how good the visibility is on the Hummer B. Uh, another con that I talked about is how slow the Bobcat is without the two-speed option. Um, really slow, about six miles an hour versus this can run up to about 12, so twice as fast um, in, in high-speed mode. And, um, you know, the Bobcat... In my mind, the biggest disadvantage is it's not ready to go when you buy it. So you bought yourself a bobcat and it's got arms and it's got a quick catch plate and it's ready for a bucket. It's ready to be used as a skid steer with a bucket on it or you know whatever other accessory. So to get it to where you're seeing it here, there's a lot of money and fabrication that goes into this. You're talking, we pull off all those arms and then we have an adapter plate that will adapt either an A and O mast, so what you're looking at right here is an A&O mast, same exact mast as what you're seeing on the A&O Hummer B. Um, there's an adapter plate that, that will adapt it to the Bobcat. There's also Edwards mast that we have on a lot of our machines and each one of those has its own advantages. We can leave that for another day. Um, the Edwards versus the A&O mast. But um, there's a fair bit of work and cost going into making this work. I want to say one of these masks is somewhere to the tune of $10,000, um, perhaps a little bit more by the time you're done uh, getting it on. So that's a big piece of not being ready to go from, from the factory. Uh, the other thing that we do that I want to show you, a little bit of a walk around, is a fifth wheel, a dolly wheel on the back. So let's come on around and take a look at these machines from the sides. Um, here's that S130. You can see I, our auxiliary hydraulics up front um, for any other attachments that we may want to attach um, on the front of the machine. This is an S130 like I mentioned. I think this is a 2014 if I remember right. Now you can see back here our fifth wheel setup. This is another big fabrication project that we have to do um, or that we do do because it's a skid steer, the turning and and uh, maneuverability really tears up the ground uh, if you don't have a fifth wheel. So the way this works is the fifth wheel comes down, it raises these rear tires uh, about an inch or two off the ground, so you're only pivoting on your front tires. And then, and then the fifth wheel obviously is on a, uh, on a pivot, and so it can swing you know, any which way as you uh, turn and maneuver. If you need the additional traction, you just lift that wheel up and then you've got all four of the tires um, on the ground for additional traction. The same thing, like I talked about climbing up trailers, we're able to um, climb up a very, very steep trailer because we have this fifth wheel that can uh, stabilize us in the back. So uh, we can climb up very, very steep inclines without the worry of going over backwards because uh, that fifth wheel, as it lowers, as you lower and raise it, you can, uh, change your, your angle there. Um, as far as accessibility, you know, once you have this big structure on the back here, you can see that getting into the engine is, is not uh, as easy. We have to 
cut a hole there to get our fuel uh, filler for the diesel. And um, in order to get in and work on this, you know, we pull these pins out. It's not terrible. Um, Okay, and then this whole structure um, can be pulled away and, and then you can get inside. Um, right now I don't have the clearance to do it, so a little bit tight, but then you can get inside the engine and, and work on it. Um, so that's a little bit of uh, our S130. We do option them with the auxiliary hydraulics that allows us to have these rear, these rear hydraulics that run our, run our fifth wheel back here. Um, now on the Hummer B side, like I was mentioning, you know, these are those fans that we've had sticks and debris fall into, uh, jam them up and, and ruin them. Um, you, can, you can see what, what a beastly machine, as far as weights, the, the Hummer B, this particular model, this XRT, weighs about 1,500 pounds more than, than the Bobcat. So it's a much heavier uh, machine. It's got a 74 horsepower Kohler. Um, under there, it's, it's not nearly as easy to work on the Hummer B. Uh, they had to put this engine in backwards. And so all the filters and, and many of the parts are on the back side of the engine that you really can't, that's very difficult to get to. Um, on the Bobcat, it's, it's very simple. Uh, they're right at the back. So maintenance is, is definitely not as easy on the, uh, on the Hummer B. Um, and there are a few parts like I say, that just, you know, they're not, they're not well protected. Um, we've had, you know, these kind of wires just, uh, you know, get rubbed. Uh, there's, there's a number of wires in there. You know, they're just kind of uh, laying around and very, very susceptible to, to damage and wear. So that's the kind of thing I'm, I'm talking about um, where we've had a lot of the, the issues uh, come about on, on these machines. Um, but uh, joystick control for the for the mast and uh, on the bobcat side you've got your hand levers for for forward and back as well as for your fifth wheel right there on the toggle and then down low you've got the foot pedals those are what operate your mast up and down and tilt it uh, forward and back so a little bit different on the controls really isn't too tough to to get used to one or the other um, it doesn't take long. The more difficult part is the whole articulation, getting used to the articulation of the uh, Hummer B. The Hummer B does offer the side shift, which is quite nice. Um, the, the Bobcat, you don't have that because you don't have all those additional uh, hydraulics. So no side shift on the mast. Uh, however, the Bobcat's so much easier to pivot and turn that you know, it's almost kind of a draw. If, if the Hummer B didn't have a side shift, it'd be virtually unusable um, in certain times. And the Bobcat, that's not really an issue, so I kind of would call that a draw. Um, as far as pricing, that's, that's another area where uh, that Hummer B, um, optioned as, as I've shown it here, was about $47,000. The Bobcat over here, is just under 40, I wanna say it's 38, 39,000. But you're talking about needing to add a mass to it. Um, and so if you don't have one of those, uh, that, that could be a $10,000 bill right there. Well, now you're at you know 48,000, so now you're pretty comparable between the two. Then you've got that whole fifth wheel set up back there, probably another, um, I don't know what, what those run us. We, like I say, we build these in-house, $1,500 perhaps. And uh, so, you know, pricing is probably fairly comparable between the two. Um, and you could go, you know, both of them have different models. Bobcat has larger ones. Hummer B has smaller ones. Um, and so that, that pricing could vary based on what you buy. But I thought I'd give you guys a quick overview of uh, the good, the bad, the ugly between the Hummer B XRT and the Bobcat S130, what we like and what we don't.